Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 10th of July, 2011. 98 years ago this day, Death Valley recorded the warmest temperature ever recorded in the United States at 134 degrees Fahrenheit or 57 degrees centigrade. Today's trivia question is that this is the second highest temperature recorded worldwide. What was the highest temperature ever recorded? And you get a bonus point if you can pronounce where it was from. If you look at the GOES X-ray plot for flare activity, you won't find any. The sun has done it again. After a burst of activity, it has quieted down. However, the sun did produce two coronal mass ejections, as marked on the plot here in blue. However, you notice there's not very much of an X-ray signature associated with them, and we'll find out why that's the case later. Frankly, the sunspot situation is confusing. Region 1246, which should be on the northwest limb, has disappeared, so it decayed away overnight. Region 1245 is stable. Region 1247 seems to have undergone significant growth. In fact, I would argue that there are now two regions there. When we come to the magnetic movie in a minute, take a look and see what you think. There's a newly numbered region, 1249, which is trailing behind region 1247. There are also three unnumbered regions on the disk. Just behind region 1245, there's a single spot at high latitude. The intense plage that was coming over the northeast limb yesterday has a single small pore in it. There is also a new region on the southeast limb which might be worth keeping an eye on. In the sunspot and magnetic movies from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we can see the comings and goings of all these various active regions. One particular thing I would like you to notice is how quickly the sunspot region in the southeast that's unnumbered currently pops into existence. That's an indication of rapid growth and thus potentially a source of future flaring if that growth continues. Once again, it falls to the Helium-304 transition region movie to give us our excitement for today and we have three fairly major eruptions from the Sun. The first one starts off the northwest limb and I have a detailed movie of that. There's a small one off the north limb of the Sun, which is quite rare. Then there's quite a spectacular but very, very slow eruption off the northeast limb. First, let's take a look at the one off the northwest limb. This reminds me very much of the eruption that we saw yesterday and it's probably from the same regions, 1243 and 1244. Note how the magnetic loops, first of all, start out very twisted and seem to unwind as the event progresses and by the end are almost straight. This is a release of magnetic tension, which is where these events get their energy from. In the prominence eruption in the northeast, you can see the prominence rising exceedingly slowly and eventually drifting away from the sun. I think this one is particularly majestic. But once again, notice the unraveling of the twisted and contorted magnetic loops. In the Corona movie, you can clearly see that there's a bright region coming over the northeast limb. This is the region I've been telling you about for several days now, and it looks very promising from an activity point of view. From the SOHO data, we can see that there have been several coronal mass ejections in the last 24 hours. However, the large one is clearly on the back of the sun, which is why it didn't have an X-ray signature. You can see this in the three repeats of the Stereo A chronograph data. The A data show us what's going on in the solar wind. The temperature of the solar wind, marked in green here, has not changed very much. However, the velocity has increased significantly. And that means we're beginning to get affected by that coronal hole with a high-speed solar wind stream. The images from NOAA 15 show us that the auroral zone is quite disturbed. And when we look at the KP index, we see that it's been varying between 2 and 4, 4 being unsettled. So in summary then, the x-ray background has risen to B2 level, the sunspot number is at 55, the radio sun intensity remains at 86 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has increased to 460 km per second with a density of about 5 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as unsettled. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is there's a good chance of C flares, but the chances of getting M or X flares seems relatively poor. The sunspot number should probably edge higher. We still have a very good chance of getting uh, CMEs. The solar wind speed will remain high. But our chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is poor. In the longer term, looking at the composite coronal image, you can see that the large region in the northeast is due back probably tomorrow, and there's another region, uh, not quite as bright, but in the south, that's due back probably in the next three to four days. So overall, activity should be rising over this next week or so. The answer to the trivia question, the highest temperature ever recorded 
was in a place called Al Azizia, which is in northern Libya, where the temperature was once recorded to be 136 degrees Fahrenheit or 58 degrees centigrade. Colin Gon requested the Brandenburg Concerto for today's uh, video. Hope you enjoyed it. So that's it for today. Keep cool. Bye for now.